Humans shape history by living their lives, and at the same time, history shapes human lives. With the past influencing our present and molding our future. Let us journey back in the tide of time. When the earth was covered by a vast ocean, the continents as we know them today did not exist. Antarctica, South America, Africa, Australia and India, they all connected to each other in a single supercontinent, Gondwana land. But then because of certain elements, certain programs, they started drifting. The whole Indian continent is at that time known as Gondwana supercontinent, which goes back to 550 million years back. Around five million years ago, humans began to appear. Some of our earliest ancestors who traced their lineage to the first inhabitants, the Gond tribes. Two and a half million years ago, till around 12,000 years ago, as humanity evolved from the Paleolithic era to the Mesolithic era. And then the Chalcolithic era. Stone was the central material used to create tools. The imagination of these ancient humans began to express itself, leaving behind imprints that survive to this day. What are these paintings? Who created them? More importantly, why were they created? Discover the oldest yearning of mankind, the desire to be storytellers. The soul that survived. Our story begins in Bhopal, the capital city of Madhya Pradesh in central India. Bhopal is fast transforming into a city of the future. Very few know of the treasure trove that Bhopal holds in its past. This is Bhopal, where our ancestors lived, survived, and left the indelible impression of their personality on the rock shelters of this area. Let's go back to the place where it all started. Forty-five kilometers south of the city, deep within the forests, are seven connected hills. From above, they look like the seven apostles of Australia. But deep down, these hills cradle the first known human civilization in India. In 1957, a decade after India became independent, an archaeologist named Vishnu Sridhar Wakankar discovered a remnant of our ancient past that would revolutionize our understanding of human history. Along with Wakankar, there were several other founders and historians who helped in the detailed study and analysis of Bhim Betka rock shelters. This is K.K. Muhammad. He was honored with India's fourth highest civilian honor, Padma Shri, and he closely studied Dr. Wakankar's work. So it was in the year 1957. Wakankar was going in a train he saw through the that window a huge sculpture. Somehow there was an uncanny hold of his, this rocks on him. So when he came here, he was blown over his feet. He did not know about the painting at that time. It was only the rocks and rocks and rock shelters. 
and then when he went inside he saw the painting most beautiful paintings one after the other one he started exploring so that was the beginning of the whole story welcome to the rock shelters of bhim betka a prehistoric residential complex a series of caves that our ancestors turned into canvases let's see how far back in time the history of these rock paintings takes us this is professor r k kanju a geologist who defines the ages of the artifacts with factual evidence we are getting the evidences of the early human fossils uh, and uh, most probably uh, these uh, rock paintings are around say 100000 years old now they hold a great significance in indian uh, archaeology or indian prehistory because through this artwork uh, we are getting the idea of the activities of the humans very early humans in india something which uh, we are not able to find otherwise that we are finding through the depiction of the artworks on these rock paintings so this gives us an idea about the living of the early man uh, at least in this part of the country and it holds same amount of significance what the discovery of harappa or mohenjodaro is to the uh, proto history to learn more about what inspired these paintings this is dr s b ota who has spent a tremendous amount of time understanding and decoding these rock paintings look at this bimbetka as a prehistoric site what do you see human beings they have not survived but that continuity that spirit of prehistoric cultures still remains that knowledge still remains in static form here this static form of the past culture helps us in reconstructing and knowing more and more every day we are knowing more and more more about the dynamic form of that prehistoric hunter gatherer that existed a couple of lakhs years back this is shri shiv shekhar shukla who plays a vital role in preserving and conserving these art forms so madhya pradesh is a very uh, typical kind of a state where you find history fusing with modernity and no other state has so much to offer when it comes to history lovers if you criss cross the state every 20 25 km 50 km you have those hidden jewels of history which are out there to reveal the story we have somehow been very lucky to have preserved this history in its purest form as the rays of the sun guide us deeper into the forests the spectacular beauty of the zoo rock unveils itself a collage of 252 animals from 16 different species all painted with intricate realism more than 30000 years ago if you look at those animals they are most of them almost 80% are facing to one direction it's not a puzzle there must have been some meaning we do not know probably it was a, some sort of a belief that has given rise to this and they must have or they must have noticed the animal migration movement directions that must have been depicted these are all assumptions visiting a rock art cave is one experience and to understand what it actually means what is being depicted over there from a local a travel person is absolutely another i'm very sure if one delves deep into it they will have different kind of stories attached with different kind of figures which are being a witness there in the rock art caves take a close look at this fantastic creature is it a bull is it an elephant or a fictional stroke of human creativity today technology is changing our future 
but it is also unveiling our past. With the help of a few software programs, experts realize that there are not just one or two, but multiple layers of paintings on many of these walls. If you see the stylistic feature of those paintings, it has not been done by one person. There are many from generations. What it means? Whatever is depicted at the earliest phase of the depiction, that continued. That means even if they are not teaching, giving uh, their knowledge to the next generation in a very formal way, it was a very informal way. The knowledge was even transferred to the next generation. Not one, not two, but more than eight layers of paintings, all drawn on top of each other. Unlike in other prehistoric locations like Altamira in Spain or Lascaux in France, successive generations of our ancestors lived for several centuries at Bhimbetka. And they have painted the imagination layer after layer. It is also the place where impressions of the first known human artistic expression, copules, were found. Bimbetka is a living heritage, not just for India, but for the world, a link between the past and the present. We Indians should feel happy that Bhimbetka is the only site in the country that has been declared by UNESCO under cultural landscape. So it is a kind of symbiotic relationship with nature and also with the people. Separated by centuries of lost time, yet connected with a common thread. A continuity of this culture can be experienced even today through the descendants of the cave painters. These descendants belong to the Kond and Bheel tribes and they still reside in different areas of Madhya Pradesh. Ram Singh belongs to the Gond community. Often known as one of the original inhabitants of Gondwana land and thus the creators of rock art. They take pride in continuing this centuries-old tradition of expression and art. During the day, he works as the guardian of displays in the Museum of Mankind in Bhopal. At other times, he is the guardian of the craft of his community. पूर्वजों की ही कला हमको जान पड़ता है क्योंकि ये कला जो है दीवाल या आंगन में करने का है। राग पेंटिंग जो देखते हैं तो मुझे ये लगता है कि इनका रहन सहन, खाना पीना सारी चीज जो है जंगली में होते थे। The first language of humans was expression. The caves of Bhimbetka and the paintings of the Gond community are all a depiction of this common and continuous language of humans. And it is artists like Ram who continue to be the fulcrum between the past and the future of human expression. Around 30 kilometers southwest from Bhopal, through a scenic drive by road, are the dense jungles of Kathodia, where tigers roar and hunt for prey. 
Nestled in the midst of the green foliage are the Kathotia rock shelters, where the cave art has been created on rock canvases that are truly unique. Uh, geologically, the rocks are very old, so the nature is such that uh, they started uh, breaking and in that process they started creating these uh, shelters. These uh, shelters uh, were preferred uh, by the early man, so they started occupying it, using these uh, shelters, also painting their activities uh, on the walls of these uh, shelters. Placed in perfect balance between the elements, Nature has fostered these paintings through the ages. The sloping angles of these walls illuminate them with light while safeguarding them from direct exposure to heat and moisture. The result? These age-old paintings look fresh and vivid, as if they were painted just weeks ago. But there's one more reason that has made these paintings last through the ages of mankind. They are made from the finest elements of nature itself. The iron from the rocks was used to create the deep red hues, and the calcium from clay was used to render the bright whites. The powders were then mixed together with an organic binding ingredient egg yolk. In another continuity of culture, this art form still finds its voice in the forests of Kathotia. Rock art caves are nothing but live museums actually and these are the you know peepholes into the history. During different times different people came but they never tried to obliterate the old paintings. You find layers of paintings in the same place you have paintings in white, in red, in yellow, and green, relating to different periods of time. This is Ladobai. She traces her heritage to the Peel community, and she still paints with natural colors like her ancestors did. उस टाइम पे कलर नहीं मिलता था लकड़ी जला के कोयला का कलर करा ये खांकर का फूल बना के जंगल में जाके हम फूल तोड़ के लाते हैं और गूंद लाते थे बांस की काड़ी से बुरश बनाया मैंने और खांकर की वो फूल के कलर बनाया तो परंपरा वो जीवित कैसे रखेंगे करके हम बनाते थे ऐसे बोलते थे बूढ़े शाने दिवाली आ गई होली आ गई ये दीवाल पे बना लेते थे कहीं बेल को को रंग लेते थे उस टाइम पे कलर नहीं मिलते थे तो भिंडी से काट के बेल को रंग देते उस टाइम पे राइट फ्रॉम द स्टोन एज थ्रू द इंटरनेट एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स हैव स्ट्राइव्ड टू बी स्टोरी टेलर्स एंड इंडिविजुअल्स लाइक लाडोबाई अपहोल्ड द वर्चुज ऑफ अ सिविलाइजेशन लॉन्ग फॉरगॉटन द सोल ऑफ द कथोटिया रॉक शेल्टर्स survives through her paintings. Bhimbetka and Kathodia are two key sites of prehistoric paintings, making Madhya Pradesh the epicenter of humanity's ancient culture. We have been very lucky that uh, UNESCO has taken cognizance of the richness of our heritage. On one side is Sachi Stupa, other side is Bhimbetka rock art caves. Bhopal itself is a heritage town. We are working very closely with UNESCO to bring in more into the fold of UNESCO. We have got so much still lying untapped. The two grand museums, the Museum of Mankind and the Tribal Museum, right in the heart of Bhopal city, are replete with installations, paintings and artifacts. Research and conservation is the responsibility, combined responsibility of the uh, government and the people and the scholars uh, is to uh, ensure that the rock art environment and geology uh, are preserved and that the environment and envelope is preserved, that the, uh, the history of waters, history of vegetation 
uh, which is as important as the history of the uh, people, the history of the villages, the families which are associated with these rock art sites, uh, that is preserved. We have been able to retain those rock art caves because there has not been much rush into those kind of places so that the preservation part is also taken care of. And at the same time, Madhya Pradesh government is doing very well in uh, by taking these things, the message of conservation and preservation to the local people also, and they are making awareness about it, about the, uh, the precious heritage of the country and how to conserve and preserve it, because you know, that is the most important thing. These caves and many more are open to you for exploration, to gaze in wonder at the brush strokes. Connect to our past and experience the collective human soul. The soul that survives.